What's going on guys? Just wanted to show you my little air compressor rig here. Uh, my grandfather's old <coughs> Quincy 210 compressor. Record of change 5, so I know it's pretty old. Still seems to run decently though. Uh, had, a, had a couple of uh, uh, three gallon tanks this was mounted to you now they developed a pinhole link leak at the bottom rusted out so the tanks were effectively junk but i knew this was a good compressor so i took it and made a rig out of it what i have over here is a gas 30 gallon tank got a max pressure of uh, i don't know 165 or so it, it originally had a uh uh, an oilless two piston compressor on it. Uh, I think it was used in a food service application for a, maybe a soda machine or so. Uh, got a Harbor Freight hose reel mounted where the uh, uh, the old uh, compressor was mounted on top of this tank. Figured I'd make this semi mobile just because of my situation currently. Yeah, the, uh, no, just about the same manifold setup that was on it from the original compressor. Um, got a uh, furnace pressure switch set to about 125 and 95 PSI on and off. Got an old backup piece of junk Harbor Freight, 21 gallon here. That's it's kind of my in between when I was getting this thing going, and I have it just rigged up as an auxiliary air tank with this little ball valve here, uh, three eighths T fittings for everything. Here's the uh, air separator, oil, oil, air, water separator from this from this setup as well as the original pressure regulator. Just kind of rig these on here. I have it set up with the pressure switch. And I've also rigged up the pressure unloader here. So it can run continuously if I need it to, you know, if I'm doing a lot of grinding or running the cutoff wheel for a while. Uh, just ran a little half inch copper tube, left it a little long so it can cool down a little bit while it gets in the tank. Most of this stuff is just uh, parts harvested from other compressors I had laying around and stuff at my dad's place. Got a, a check valve right there going into the tank. Works pretty well. Keeps the pressure off the heads. Uh, it's a one and a half horse motor. Not too sure of the details because the information plate kind of got wiped off. I'm a little bit of an idiot and was cleaning things off with the brake cleaner. And I wiped all the information just after I read it was a one and a half horse. I'm assuming it's standard, you know, 17. 1725, 1730 RPM. I got a, well, that looks like a five inch pulley on there. So it would put this thing around 600 RPMs running. Let's, uh, let's fire it up and see how she sounds. Remarkably quiet. Oh yeah. Because of the mobileness of this, this setup, I had this, and this compressor was never meant to run with a pressure switch, only the continuous run unloader here. It only had a power cord going out. So all I did here was run the line from the pressure switch. This black line's going to the outlet. This orange cord is going down here to a switch. And from the switch, there's a three prong receptacle. So if I need to take it anywhere, all I have to do is unplug that, un unplug the black wire from the wall, 
And then I'll have, you know, semi-mobile. We'll just have to undo that pressure line right there, the uh, outlet of the compressor. And I have the continuous run and loader here rigged up with a quick connect. So I know they make, uh, they make a, a, a manual rig for this thing and you know I'm sure it'll cost me more than this whole setup did to buy it and get it all set up so this ran the quarter inch copper line over here very crudely bent please feel free to criticize my pipe bending skills and uh, yeah let's see how she runs I've got it set up for the pressure switch right now and this tank is off so it's just filling up this 30 gallon tank let's see how she goes Runs real quiet. Man, I love it. That piece of junk Harbor Freight one. I tell you what, I can't even hear. I can't even hear myself think over that thing running. It's just so damn loud. And that's why it was only a temporary one. And it's pretty much only worth the tank at this point. I just use it as extra tank storage and a backup should this old Quincy take a dump. But I doubt she will because she's been running for, oh, I'd say, oh, well over 50 years. And before, it never had a pressure switch, so it was running continuously every time it was on. Man, I, I really like these things. It's pressure lubricated, sitting at, oh, let's at mm, 26, 27 pounds of oil pressure. Just running a uh, 30 weight non detergent oil in there. Let's see where we're at here. This is the pressure gauge off the original tank. They were already up to 60 psi since I turned it on. That was filling up from empty. I was checking it out. These. This tank was just laying around my dad's place with the, the bad compressor mounted on it. And on Granger, they wanted over four grand for that same compressor with that tank. The tank rated at about 165 PSI working pressure. I'm not even coming close to that, about 120. Works just fine. You can see the, uh, it's still marked from the construction company that this came from. Yes, it was a construction company that went out of business and all their gear went to auction and that's when my grandfather picked this thing up. He ran it hard. I know that construction company ran it hard. I know they were using it for, for uh, running uh, framing nailers. So, I'm sure this thing definitely needs a rebuild. And at home I have a uh, another 210 unit mounted on a 60 gallon tank. Uh, the, the tank I don't think is any good. So what I think I'm going to do is, well the, the other 210 unit I have does not have unloaders on the suction side. So what I think I'm going to do is, next time I'm around, grab that compressor, mount it on this rig here, while I get a rebuild kit for this one, and rebuild it. So I'll have two going, and then once I get this one rebuilt, I'll take the, older, the other one off, and probably rebuild it too. Oh, let's see, we just switched off there, that was a few, a few minute run. See what we're up to here. Oh, looks like about, oh, 125 or so, 125 PSI. And I've got my regulator set to 
Oh, it should be about 90 with the with the valve open. Well, let's go over here to the bench. Let's see. Got my old good old Milton blower and blowing a little water out there. Man, I found a, a lot of good stuff laying around the place where I got that tank from, my dad's place. This old Milton Milton bayonet tire filler. Pretty interesting piece. It didn't have a head on it, so I threw that old chuck on there. And it's pretty interesting how it works. Let's see if I can get this hooked up. You see here, this, since there's no line out of the thing, it's going to build up pressure. Give it air. The bayonet comes out. Let's see, that's 50 psi in the line. The only problem with this uh, this old girl is she's got a very small pinhole leak. Come into focus there, you little shit. A little pinhole leak right there. So it'll work when it's oriented in the right direction. There's another one of these laying around. I might grab it just for parts. Should I ever need to rebuild it? Let's see how the old little die grind, mini die grinder goes on here. Yep. Runs pretty good and able, able to work on my stuff. You got this uh, Ingersoll Rand 212 3 8 impact right here. Recovered that from the same same place. You know, it wasn't even being used, just sitting on a shelf, presumably left for dead. Only thing missing from it was the screw and the knob for the other side of the valve here. And I uh, should be getting that in the mail in the next couple days or so. You come in and, uh, you know, I've done a little, you know, wheeling, sanding, wheeling job. This thing was pretty beat up. It's had a hard life. I guarantee it. Probably in a shop somewhere. And then somehow ended up with my dad. And he didn't even know he had it, I don't think. I grabbed it off the shelf. And it, it chooches. Uh, <laughs> I haven't had any, any problems with it. It's, I think it's my, my, favorite, my favorite new tool. See, I got the old... Central pneumatic half inch impact here, the Harbor Freight house brand. And a lot of people shit on these Harbor Freight tools. And I know it's not the earthquake model, but uh, if you look at the cases, the hammer cases, uh, you know, of these, they look similar. And that's because this, this gun that is the, you know, unknown. Chinese manufacturer is an almost damn near identical copy of the Ingersoll Rand 231, which has been an industry standard for years. So for these, I have this little swivel set up here so I can run my quarter inch fittings for things that don't require as much air. And I have a 3 8 T quick connect here whoops that blew off onto the other side so I can run things that require a little bit more chooch <coughs> this gun is not terrible at all I actually have not had anything that it can't take off yet on an old rusty Midwest car this uh, valve here the forward and reverse lever. That's it. That's how you go to forward, and this is how you go to reverse. Is uh, let's see, I dropped that piece here. Damn near identical to this, except it's a little bit bigger. And as you can see here, this side is the air inlet for the reverse. This side is the air inlet for the forward setting. You can see how it cams, how it has a little, come on, focus you little shit. How it cams over a little bit. And right
right there is full go. That's about half go, and that's about no go. Right there. So that's how that that's how that actually changes the the, the speed. It's just how much air it lets through as you rotate this. On the Harbor Freight gun, I filed that flat. I don't want I don't want any limitations to the airflow going through that thing. You know, it's a it's a forty five dollar piece. I think less than forty with the twenty percent off. Ain't no thing. Just keep that keep that full go all the time. You know, I gotta if I want to uh, finesse this guy or you know a ratchet will do the job. And plus, you can count the Uggas as it goes on. So it really ain't a thing. I didn't want any limitations on the uh, the air going in there. Got a few other tools in here that this compressor is running. The old cheapo $10 air hammer. The cheapo air drill. The cheapo cutoff wheel, four inch version. And I'll tell you what, man, these cheapo air tools, you might as well not spend any more for more expensive ones. This one, this thing's a little chooch mobile. The little butterfly impact wrench. I'll tell you what, I got this one because. I needed a 3 8 impact, 3 8 air. You know, there's it's not really a lot, whole lot when you actually need a half inch impact. There's a whole lot when you need a 3 8 impact. And it was between, you know, the, the, the Har Harbor Freight Hazard Fraud, whatever. It was between this guy or their version of the 3 8 gun. And you know what? I opted for this one. And it turns out it was a good a good idea because I later found this one, which is more than I will ever need for 3 8 drive. I'll tell you what, this little fucker screams. I have it with 3 8 T fitting. Just so I can get all the chooch that it possibly needs. And it's real nice. That's, that's the reverse. That's the forward. And I think I have it set here just damn near the lowest setting possible. It was just on two. Let's shoot her all the way up to eight. See if that makes any sound difference. You got a little knob here. That's... <coughs> yeah, that thing just... It just howls. <coughs> and it rips things apart. It does all I need it to do. <laughs> you wouldn't believe where I got this. This Air Ace. You know, Taiwanese... Speed sander, fucking big lots. About 10 years ago, they had some surplus air tools in there. And that goes the same for this Air Ace ratchet, you know, which is oh, next to the IR gun and the butterfly. Probably my third favorite 3 8 method of 3 8 <laughs> propulsion. It really. How many fucking times do you actually ever use the ratcheting mechanism on an air ratchet with the hose all hooked up and everything? You, you don't. You, you really don't. So, it's pretty much there as a novelty. Keep it as a backup. Before I got that little mini grinder, the mini die grinder, this was what I was working with. This thing's a chooch mobile. You can see it's the ARO equipment company you know these model numbers are hand stamped on here so I can't even can't even figure out how old this thing is I took the fitting off otherwise I'd show it to you but it came without any uh, uh, the uh, the collet screw so this is a quarter inch NPT you know uh, female female sleeve that I just cut off it's a rig and it bottoms out. It bottomed out and would always let the tool loose. Wouldn't even hold a carbide bit in there properly. So I retired it. 
And it's pretty much a novelty at this point. I think back here I've got this thing. I also found from the same stash of old tools. It's a Senko Model J pneumatic stapler. It's not even a Model J. You can see it's a J because it's the beginning of the serial number. But the Model J's came later. This, this, uh, this is a very early version of the Senko pneumatic stapler. And I think uh, it, it still works great. It's very difficult to find the right staples for it, though. I've had a problem. I've had a pro big problem trying to find the correct staples for this old Senko unit. Got this old air ratchet. You know, I, I, these things, they're, they're, they're good. We've got another one over here. These are both pretty much parts, parts ratchets. And I say that because, you know, it's, yeah, I don't even know. They don't even have a brand on them. This one's probably made in, made in Japan. This one's probably another Asian one. Older units. And the problem is the ratchets don't, they don't, they don't hold. When you have pressure on it, they they slip. So my solution to that, and the, this one, the ratcheting worked just fine, but the motor would, it, it would, it would gum up and it wouldn't start every time. And this one, the older one, a little more worn in, would start damn well every time, but the ratchet would slip. So I tried to swap the heads out, which they were interchangeable and they, they were, they fit, but I still ran into the same problem. So these are uh, currently off duty. Don't really ever use them for anything. Leave them sitting around. Oh yeah, I got the, uh, also the cheapo angle air die grinder. Haven't had a problem with this thing yet. Put a little yeah, grease in that, in that bulb. Of course I, I took it apart before 